So basically my computer behind me now has a really bizarre problem and all of this happened right before the GTX 690 testing. So unfortunately for the GTX 690s, they may have got a pretty unfair verdict and some of those blue screens or even most of those blue screens could have been because of this motherboard. So what happened right before I installed the GTX 690s was I was installing files across to the NAS, uh, the tech, yes, NAS. And all of a sudden my mouse just blew out and I thought my mouse had died but then on the screen I had noticed the file transfer had just completely dropped out as well and the lights were still on for the NIC as well so I was just really confused at this stage and then once I got the mouse into another USB port I had found that the two SATA drives connected to the Asmedia SATA controller they had blown out as well so one positive thing that's going to come out of this video is that in future motherboard reviews I'm now going to look at power delivery to individual ports and components and see how that motherboard is structured, not only when it comes to overclocking and audio and all that other stuff, but also power delivery to individual components. So that's gonna be the positive thing that's coming out of this video, but we've now got this motherboard working and how we got it working is we're just running off the front two USB ports at the moment, disabled all the NICs, disabled all the uh, rear USB ports and disabled that Asmedia SATA controller and it's stable now. And I know what some people are probably thinking, they probably think it was the overclocks. And no, we've got this thing running at five gigahertz stable, but just with the front two USB ports. So it's a pretty crazy problem, but Gigabyte did send over their Z370 Aorus board and they did want me to take a look at it and they did want me to specifically overclock it. So we're gonna see if we can get my 8700K higher than the stable five gigahertz overclock I previously had. And also on that note, while we wait for the replacement for the fatality board to come in from ASRock, I'm gonna take you guys through a tour on this Z370 board and see if it is any good. See if it's better than the previous Z370 that they had with half the phases. So let's get on with this. Okay, so over there we've got that video still uh, rendering and over here we have the front USB hub which is going to the rear of the computer. And now that is powering my mouse and keyboard. So that's a pretty bizarre setup we've got. And then we've got the spare port here if I need to connect a memory card or any other device. Uh, inside this case at the moment though, we have the 1070 Ti Hall of Fame and that's running really well. I love that graphics card, it's so quiet. Uh, we've got the Elgato capture card above that. But below that, what I've done is I've installed a 10 gig NIC. This is the Intel uh, two port NIC. I forgot the name of it, but it's a really decent one. Of course, I got it on sale for a real good bargain. It was just a tray icon. And now one thing about tray icons too, guys, tray just means that there's no box. So you just get the product in whatever it is and it won't have any retail packaging. So tray can usually be cheaper and it can usually be a lot cheaper, especially if that seller is just wholesaling it out and wants to get rid of it. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take all these components out and then put this motherboard in and then see how it will fare under the tech yes hammer. Can't touch this. So now we're stress testing the CPU, we're over 10 minutes into the test and it's doing absolutely fine. It's five gigahertz at 1.44 volt. Now I've tried booting up into Windows at 5.1 and although it will boot in, as soon as I start a stress test, it just blue screens out. So this CPU I've got is just not capable of 5.1 gigahertz. Now I would take it higher, except I believe the warping point or the melting point of these CPUs is over 1.45 volt. I believe that's like the danger zone. Anything over that, you risk damaging your CPU permanently and since we're already getting at like 90 degrees here, 
we are reaching a pretty dangerous point. So we're at 25 degrees ambience, so the ambient temperatures are mediocre at best. But good news for the motherboard is that the temperatures on the motherboard VRM are actually really good. So we're getting up to around about 65 degrees at the core of the base there on the VRM and the heat sinks like in the mid 50s. So Gigabyte have definitely done a good job on this Aorus Z370 uh, Gaming 2.0. So they have said that they've implemented a better VRM and it's definitely showing in these tests. So I do like it when a company takes feedback and then they better that product and focus on what the customer actually wants. And I'll just quickly stop this test and turn these fans down because they are PWM controlled and they are making a bit of noise. All right, much better. So now I got done running the SSD test and I put it through a couple of tests and the Ida64 SSD test was straight temperatures and we could see that the um, top slot with the uh, heat sink on it, that was doing about 11 degrees better than the bottom SSD. So that's some really good news. It's actually a heat shield that works properly. Uh, if you guys have seen the MSI boards in the past, They've just had this marketing thing and it's actually made temperatures worse. This heatsink does a good job of cooling down the SSD and it's glad to see that they're following suit uh, like a Zeus. A Zeus was doing a heat shield on at least the Z370 motherboard I tested recently and that dropped uh, the NVMe SSD temps down substantially. So they are following suit, they are getting it right and they have got it right on this motherboard at least. So now we're just finishing up the last component of this motherboard and this is the onboard audio. And now the frequency response curve is really good. It's flat after 20 hertz practically throughout the whole range there. Before 20 hertz you've got a 0.2 decibel drop off until 10 hertz and then before 10 hertz you've got about a 2 decibel drop off. So really good onboard audio except the crosstalk is a real funny thing. Uh, this is how Gigabyte have fixed the problem that practically all the other Z370 motherboards have and I'll put the link up here if you want to see that comparison but above 90 volume practically all these motherboards had a problem where the crosstalk was either leaking from the left channel to the right channel or vice versa and <laughs> this time around Gigabyte have decided they could fix the problem by just lowering the volume <laughs> so we've got the volume set to 100 but the problem is it's at least six decibels lower in its terms of its max levels than all those other Z370 motherboards are. So Gigabyte, interesting fix, but I mean, technically it's fixed, but you just, it's a quick patch. Anyway, the mic import, it's gonna be really reliable if you use it at that sweet spot of plus 20 dB and 50 volume level. Going up to 100 at 20 dB will introduce a bit of noise. Of course, plus 30 dB at 100 you can just see the noise just creeping in. I'll let you guys have a quick listen though. Anyway guys, closing up now, my new editing rig has at least a temporary fix and it's got the Aorus motherboard in there. I'm sure ASRock aren't gonna like that, but hey, they got the motherboard sitting here and it didn't blow out a whole power line and something else crazy didn't happen. But the uh, Ultra Gaming 2 is not a bad motherboard. They've really worked on this board to make it solid. Uh, you saw those SSD temperatures dropping in the top slot. I'd like to maybe see that heatsink go to the bottom slot as well. Uh, if there was one thing I could critique about this motherboard would be the BIOS itself. It is very detailed, that's a great thing, but 
all the options for overclocking your CPU, they're like all in different tabs. I'd like to see them kind of put all of them in the same tab, like the power limits and also load line calibration and stuff like that. If they could put that in the same tab, that would be awesome. Uh, but as it stands, this motherboard is really solid. I think it comes in at around $165. Uh, at least that's the Rev 1. I'm hoping the Rev 2 is the same price. And of course, you've got that RGB bling bling. Uh, you can change that in the BIOS as well. So you don't have to install the software. And it actually looks really nice. The red um, blinking off the white on the Hall of Fame card. I really like that. So it's giving me ideas to maybe make a full white build with red LED lights. I think that looked really cool. Anyway, ideas, ideas. Lastly though, it's getting pretty late here, so I'm gonna to go to bed very soon, but tomorrow I've gotta to fly out to Thailand, and I will be doing the used parts hunt there this month, and also I'm going there for an event. I can't say which event it is, but if you guys have been reading up on rumors, then you'll probably know what it is already. Look forward to giving you some awesome coverage over there. I'll be there for two days, but if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. If you've got any comments about the motherboard, if you wanna see something in Thailand or anything else, drop a comment. I love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. So I've got Run Dunning now. Run Dunning. Run <laughs> Dunn Running. <laughs>